Okay, item number three, uh, we did send back, we did get the uh, signed uh, commissioner's copy of the uh, agreement and we're ready to start on the black item. We do have, I guess, our FD39 discretionary list. It's already been approved, fully operational, ready to go. This, this today's list is on the flex fund. If I can get that back into them tomorrow, then when Tom gets a, a go ahead and equip it to black up, we won't have any delay. Motion to approve. Thank you. Mr. Elder? Yes. Mr. Masterson? Yes. Mr. Wicker? Yes. Mr. Caldwell? Yes. Yeah. Okay, item number four is tied to that just a little bit. We got our FD39 money, or uh, $311,000. There was a, uh, a request pending on the uh, uh, I guess uh, economic development project called the Village Play Project. Y'all are probably familiar with that. Tom Paisley uh, said, well, we're going to go ahead and fund you that whole $311,000 because there are some issues with right away and deep work and a little bit on the, uh, uh, we can't fund that FD39 project for the Village Play Project right now because there's not clear title, clear connection on to, to that property next belongs to. But we want it done, and we'll, every other county's going to get 200000 but we're going to fund you 311000 if you'll agree to carry out the uh, Village Way project. And I think I discussed that and explained that to you all about earlier. And so now, uh, I'm investigating a couple of different options on getting that project done. I thought I'd have another in hand uh, testament from Wayne Hughes today, but I didn't see it on the, I didn't the last couple of days. But there, we do have a, a preliminary estimate, but I think we can do it cheaper than that. We do need to go ahead and approve the, uh, uh, the project at the least cost method. And, uh, so uh, I guess I this, this is that a project that uh, we have to bid out as well. No, I'm not sure I'm familiar with the village way project. There's uh, 390 feet of additional road work to uh, access a, uh, a building that's going to be used for another back of the receiving station. Uh, I guess in a visit with Larry Tensor with the Department of Highways and conversation with Don Paisley, this was something that was submitted to Tom Lund and Senator Higdon uh, lobbied for it. And uh, it, it's something that they wanted to try to help fund, but because of some issues with the uh, actual right of way uh, clarity, they, I think the Tanis House got that worked out because it is a permanent easement that was described in the properties that are joining. They can, they can do it, they can use it. Uh, but because they funded our full 311 valve, they asked us to take this and trade off really an extra $111,000 to pick up the 30, roughly what was estimated was $35,000 for the road work. Uh, I think, and I gave Wayne Hughes a copy of our, uh, our bid blackout price and our DGA price, and it may work like our Hornback Bridge projects do, that we can pay for materials and labor. When I see his proposal, when it comes back in, we can probably do it without uh, the bid process. We pay for materials at our bid price. Okay, what was your question? Well, my question is, I uh, just want to make sure that uh, while we're going through the process of approving it, should we also, do we have to, to kill two birds with one stone, do we need to also bid it out? But, uh, I well, I mean, yeah, if, it, if we're paying for it, it's a project that's going to exceed $20,000. I mean, it, it would have to be bid. We could make that in a motion. That's part of the motion. So, <coughs> motion to approve the village uh, way project and also a motion to, uh, along with advertising for bids for uh, repair and payment. Second. Okay. Thanks, Jeff. But, but let me ask one question. They, they did get the right of way and all that cleared up. So, if, they, if they're going to be putting money into this project, it's that, that's all been cleared up by somebody. It is, uh, it's my understanding that Candace Ingram Gray has traced it down and it's, it's uh, clarified to the point. It will actually become a city street at the end of this. It's like a current, it's an extension of a, of a city street now. I guess that now. Uh, okay, hang on here. Yeah. Are you thinking the same thing I'm thinking? Well, of course, the, the, the other issue that comes up there, I mean, we obviously can't go in and Unless there are there are other circumstances, you know, pave other city streets and things like that. Although there are circumstances when you can do that, but uh, if if this is if this is an economic development, I mean, there's a there's a wide uh, swath of, of 
things that you can do if it if it's if it comes out of economic development type funds. And I don't know exactly what the end game on this thing is going to be. If there's a project that's that's there and ready to go, just you know waiting for this to happen. And, and some of those things, you know, you can expend money as long as it's in furtherance of economic development. That um, you know, even though it later is going to be dedicated to some city street someplace. That's similar to what the, when they made the uh, dedication of FE39 funds for the uh, access road for, it came to the county, $150,000 was already an agreement signed for the crossroads for the project out on the, uh, the spec building off the bypass. Now, that, that wasn't routed to the city, it was routed to the county for whatever reason. Uh, the specs are being drawn up, the engineering work is being done on that through economic development to get that project in a Biddable position, so you know that that's another one probably need to look at. But uh, from an economic development standpoint, why the state funded it that way rather than going through the city, I don't know. They did the A.D. Lee property at that time through the city when that access road was put in. We thought they were going to have the uh, processing plant out there, the uh, Sanchez Brothers and Donald's project. You know that, that it was a substantial amount of money that was channeled to that road project at that time. Well, let me say this. You know, the difference is, you know, if, if you, um, if, if there's if there's a, a a recognizable end game here, I mean, if, if that that would that would that would be tied to the economic development, it would be tied to jobs, it would be tied to some project, uh, then that's one thing. You know, the, the the issue where you run into trouble is if you have a a, a private owner of a facility or a building that that. Um, is speculating that they might sell the building, and there's not, and there's not a, uh, uh, there's not an end game out there. How how far you can go under the guise of economic development to benefit what essentially is a private project? And I'm not saying either one of those are because I'm not particularly familiar with either one of them. But how that, about that's, this? Uh, how about this? I would go ahead and move forward with the motion, as I have stated, uh, pending the uh, your final approval. Because I think obviously there's some things you need to look into. I'm sure I think you need to get with uh, this uh, Kansas Single Gray verified on that as well as. Uh, would you agree? I, I'll be glad to do that. And Bill, this is out of the, at the old King Mary property, right? Right. Uh, the access and the road goes to the city of Citizen. There's home and that, what was the half end? That, that street ends, uh, and, and extension 390 feet was needed to uh, access additional buildings for additional, uh, I guess, need to bring in the back of the city back around. Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll talk to about right. it. So we have a motion and a second? Mm -hmm. yeah. Motion and second, pending the approval of the county attorney. Mr. Elder? Yes. Mr. Masters? Yes. Mr. Wicker? Yes. Mr. Caldwell? Yes. Yes. Okay, also in that vein, we have another, uh, another project that uh, we have Begun the process and uh, road improvement for uh, Maker's Mark Road Improvement, uh, right away option acquisition. Uh, need a motion on approval of that. A motion. Second. Mr. Caldwell? Yes. Mr. Elder? Yes. Mr. Wicker? Yes. Mr. Masterson? Yes. Okay, yeah. item number five. Uh, I think you all have seen copies of the, we had a meeting on Wednesday a week ago, and we had another meeting, uh, several of y'all were in attendance on the uh, advisory council meeting, the advisory board. Uh, Joe has gone through and made the changes and the recommendations and upgrades on the address and standards that were suggested. Might be a typo or two. We did actually, I put a copy of the minutes from May the 10th, where we, May 16th rather, we actually brought it up and we preliminarily just I guess the motion was made that we do a first read, but we knew we'd have to do a second. But uh, I guess we're, we're not ready officially to uh, we haven't published it, so I guess we just need to set the next meeting as the second reading and uh, publication, and do a publication and do our second reading and adoption at the September the fifth meeting. So, uh, Joe, would we need to do an actual another first reading tonight, or is that since it's in the minutes that we did it on May sixteenth? No, we don't. If, if we did that um, on May 16th, then we don't have to do that. Uh, 
you know, you can amend the ordinance between the first and second readings. So there's still uh, going to be a little modification, but yeah. they need to do the yeah. publication the next yeah. time. So I'll, I'll, I'll make sure that we get that published and that the next meeting we can have second reading and ask that. Set option on the second and fifth. See, it's really just kind of bringing up the day. Does anybody see any additional changes that need to be made? Keith has done the proof reading on it. Uh, very good. It looks like it's got all the changes in that we've all talked about or had concerns about. Okay, yeah, item number six, we have a guest with us today, and I apologize if it runs so long. Uh, Mr. Molly King Smith is here today on behalf of St. Catherine College and, and particularly on behalf of this upcoming event. Uh, on September the 3rd, there is it's going to be a, a, a Marion County support for a, a kind of a very ward special event uh, at Myrtle Dean, and the uh, proceeds are going to be used on behalf of Terry Ward's naming. Uh, I guess the opportunity for some uh, physical space and, and areas in the H Emily Hundley Library uh, because Terry Ward was a longtime employee and a faculty member at St. Catherine. And I do have a proclamation here that uh, on September the 3rd, all the court is now signed. Uh, because of that special day and because of that special event, we uh, are going to uh, name September the 3rd, William Terry Ward Day, on his birthday on that special day that we're going to hold a uh, special commemorative fundraising event to further uh, give some honor to Terry in the process of uh, raising some funds for that dedicated space in his honor in the library. So, Molly, if you would come forward. Named the information desk in the library in Terry's honor because, as everyone knows, no one knew more information in there or had more information in their head than Terry did. He loved learning and he certainly loved Mary County. So, thank you so much for this. Yes, thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Terry was certainly a great story. Okay, I'll read just about now therefore part of it. Now therefore be it resolved that Tuesday, September 3rd, 2013, the anniversary of his birth, be dedicated and celebrated his honor and memory as William Terry Ward Day in Grange County. And on that day, there will be a special event to honor his life and service to the St. Catherine L. Levin Church. So we all know and miss Terry, I guess this is actually five years, so it's, uh, it's hard to believe it's been that long and that fast. Keep that in mind because I'm sure some of y'all are going to be invited to that function and it'll be a great evening and a great cause. Okay, item number seven. Uh, the last meeting we actually had our certified, uh, I guess, assessment and we made a just a simple motion about approving and, and maintaining our tax rate at the current level. Uh, Kevin reminded me that the auditors like to see in our minutes. The, the language where we do, in fact, verify and set the tax rate for the uh, intangible and the motor vehicle as well. So if somebody would like to put that into a motion form. Uh, I attached a copy of last year's minutes where we actually did that. I think we actually did the same thing last year. Uh, and that would be setting the real estate uh, tax at 8.6 cents and where it is and, and maintaining as well the other tax rates have been in effect for as far as I know 20 years. 10.9 cents on tangible property and 10.9 cents on the uh, motor vehicle tax. Mr. Wicker? Yes. Mr. Caldwell? Yes. Mr. Masterson? Yes. Yes. Okay, hey, item number eight, we've had a new copy a little over a year. I guess it came a year ago. We now do a, uh, like we had on the old copy, a maintenance contract. Uh, it's a little higher than it was in the past. Our old copy only did about 18,000 copies a year. The uh, counter on this one right here, because it's uh, networked and it's uh, actually running to all our computers, so now it's about 48,000 copies a year, which I guess is a good thing because it's cheaper for, for a copy than the old one were. Uh, I guess I'm looking for a motion to uh, approve the maintenance agreement with Jody's uh, business machines and also attached to that, if y'all want to look at it, he had uh, 
made me aware that he actually sold a copy that the animal shelter has from Dave Hergen, the last product that he bought. Uh, and it's now seven years old, in 2006. So he, he said it's uh, hard to maintain and the parts are getting dipped off the fine. And uh, he has recommended that we replace that copier out there with uh, uh, a model that would do both uh, vaccine and scanning and uh, probably cheaper, or cheaper than the, the last machine. So we have the uh, service contract, which is on the existing copier, correct? That's on our copier here in this office. Gotcha. Motion to approve the service contract on our copier here in the office, as well as purchase of a new copier from Jones Business Machines for the animal shelter. Second. Mr. Elder? Yes. Mr. Masterson? Yes. Mr. Wicker? Yes. Mr. Caldwell? Yes. Okay, item number nine, our treasurer has uh, prepared a, a, what I call contingent, but it's a, it's a transfer for up to $60,000 to the detention center fund. Uh, I don't know whether it'd be a state uh, draw or not, but it's possible that they may not come in time for payroll and stuff, so just to be, may not even have to transfer, so just to be uh, prepared, or recommend that we transfer the $60,000 contingency fund money. Second. Mr. Elder? Yes. Mr. Caldwell? Yes. Mr. Wicker? Yes. Mr. Masterson? Yes. And related to the I don't transfer it in there until they need it. So right now they're running pretty fast, uh, and it wouldn't look like they would need it. And part of the reason is because the state, through the EMAR system, the direct deposit, somehow they put $199,000 of road department money in the jail fund. Uh, and that's why he, the next motion for is to transfer the $199,000 that erroneously got deposited into the jail fund. Transfer to, to the road fund. <laughs> Motion that truck license fee yeah, money. Yeah. We got a letter saying it actually increased by about nine nine hundred dollars, but uh, come to find out where you put the wrong account. Got a motion and a second. Mr. Elder. Yes. Mr. Masters. Yeah. Mr. Wicker. Yeah. Mr. Caldwell. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, what reports, Tom? Yeah, I'm sorry to get y'all report. We're just trying to prep everything so we can start black copping Monday is the plan. We've got one list approved that we can start on. Um, I guess we need to make sure that we get something done about the regular streets because that may be something I have to start on next week sometime. On, I don't know if we have to have... I know the state is paying for the black top and... Uh, equipment rental and everything for us to do those streets but my question was is do we need any kind of paperwork or anything to well, Tony, Wilder, Tony Wilder insisted and Don Paisley approved that we we include and it's in the FD 39 discretionary allocation uh, the Broadway and I guess there's there's three streets actually that were damaged during the ice storm and uh, actually because of the strong perseverance and uh, discussion that Magistrate uh, Cotton Smothers has had. We could not get the uh, uh, hazard mitigation funds or any of the FEMA follow-up money to, to pay for the damage done on the roads during the traffic with trucks on ice storm. So they, they did include the, the, the funding for those roads in this FD39 allocation. Uh, and Tony said, you know, it shouldn't be a problem coming up with a little memorandum agreement between the city and the county possibly that was needed to uh, apply the roughly twenty thousand dollars worth of total spending on the three streets involved there in regular. So Joe, can you develop a document that we can get signed off on between the city and the county? I can. I'm, I'm again I am i am unfamiliar with that project, but I mean I can you know again usually if you you would not be able to use our funds for for work on other city streets, but it sounds like this is going to be completely funded through state resources, and I assume probably reimburse us for cost of materials, labor, all that kind of stuff. And if you said this was partly the result of our use of the streets during the, the we collected storm. Debris, debris from the whole area down there, all the way up to Scott Ridge, and we five twenty seven all the way up eighty four. So we we in part helped or assisted in the damage of the streets, I guess, because of the. 
and very little of the debris actually came out of the city of Yeah, I, I think we could, I mean, I, I think that would be appropriate if, again, us considering if it's not our money and, and, and we, our actions in an emergency situation help you know, we're partly to blame for damaging the streets. Um, and I can't, I just was not familiar with the project. Yeah, I think you need to look into it because uh, you guys agree that I can see where the money was funded through us, and I understand if we had a part to play with an option, I can understand that. But on the other side of it, we did. It seems to me that the money, truly, you know, was funded through us, would have to be sent to the city of Greatwick. Uh, they would have to then, therefore, contract it out. Would you agree to that? Well, typically, that's the way it would be done because, you know, the, the, the theory is even if our workers are. Um, if we're getting if we're getting reimbursed 100 percent for labor materials time all of that kind of stuff that uh, it's still taking our workers away from county projects that they should be working on as opposed to some city streets and that's the rub that we always get into even though there's always these city streets that we would like to be able to 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 assist in doing that that legally can't because even if it's not costing us anything, it's actually diverting our labor away from our projects to a city project. Now, well, there's also a lot of penalty issue off our property, isn't it? You know, when we take our, right. our boys and come right. on. Now, the thing about this project, if I understand it correctly, is is that we use sites down in Greywood in an emergency situation as emergency depositories for all of this brush and things. Our vehicles were probably going in and out of there and, and the, the traffic maybe in large part because we were directing it down there caused damage to the street. Well, and so I think if you convert I mean that's all you know, you know and, and that being the case I think we can work around that. But again I, I don't I'll, I'll need to talk to you and find out exactly I'm not I do exactly now some down streets and uh, and actually, Larry Pinscher wanted to have another street on, but he said they'd all come in this way off Highway 4 or 5.7, but it wasn't on the list. They so didn't specifically put it in the agreement. But uh, anyway, uh, I think it's well justified, and I'm glad the state gave us some money. And I think the lower lifetime service fees and gravel suites the only disadvantage of regular because they're incorporated. They don't have a tax rate. It's not like they get a lot of money that they're going to be able to do it with themselves. Well, that, we'll get it. I mean, bottom line is we're going to make sure that we can take care of this. We're going to make sure that the process that yeah. the done does. Well, well, what I was concerned, I, I need to take a grader down there tomorrow, you know, and cut back the edge of the roads to prep it for black coffee. And a lot of times I get phone calls over that. Well, I don't know how I'm going to handle phone calls. That's why I'm too. I, I, don't, I don't want to see a black boy with black top street highway because I don't pay attention to calls with no revenue. The only thing we damaged was the state highway and the rail on the last day. Uh, that's why I feel like explaining the rail because I don't know what's going to happen here. Yeah, if you give me the information, I'll, I'll put something together. Yeah. Okay, the road from there. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hey, don't go, we get, go ahead there and I got one thing. I have uh, interviewed several people on this job and I haven't been able to choose a CDL driver as of yet or one that was willing to take the job but I have found the one that would do hand pickup and I would like to hire a Dennis Shuck of 337 East Martin Luther King for sanitation work. Motion to approve. Second. Mr. Elder? Yes. Mr. Caldwell? Yes. Mr. Wicker? Yes. Mr. Masters? Yes. Yeah. And I don't have anything else. We're about finished mowing and spraying and hope we, it doesn't sound like we're going to get two and a half weeks of blacktop, so we're going to try to lay it all in two and a half weeks if possible. We get some lights. Yeah. It just depends on how the weather is and how the <coughs> things go. That's. I was trying to work, work out some of these details. I hope it's made and read sunny weather. Two and a half weeks is going to go by pretty fast. I hope it stays sunny and sunny. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I have one cover. If somebody gets a chance to look at it, it's uh, up on Fisher Creek. Yes. Probably a 30 inch cover, but the bottom end is clear, but if you look through it, you can only see about that much on the upper end. It's not stopped up on the end because it's 
got water backed up because it's barely trickling through. The last big rain that washed across the road real bad. Uh, and I couldn't tell if it's what's in there, but. Yeah. And, and where's the location? It's you got an address? Yeah, 1445. <coughs> 1445. Right there where Purdom's driveway is. Right past Junior Garrett. Uh, I'm not sure where they live. It's 14, his mailbox was 1445. Okay. It's across, it's like I said, it's a big one. And you can tell where the water's <coughs> coming from another big rain. It's going to might damage the road. Is it where you go through the woods? You go on through and, the woods and, and it's about a half end. mile from the end. About a half mile from the end, okay. Um, I'll take a look. It's a big, in a little dip, it's a uh, big cover. And I looked up in there, I couldn't tell what's in there, but it's almost choked all the way up. We have been still having small flood damage areas. Yeah. They had three inches of rain the other day in the uh, Ward's Branch area, caused some damage. At least it's isolated to small areas, but it usually takes a day or so to f try to fix everything back. He's got a few more little small items. That's on the thing if you're busy. If somebody has a chance to, I, I don't know, something, they have to have a back hole or it can just knock something out of it or what. But, uh, if you get time, if not, maybe it won't rain. I'll add it to the lease. Jack is a golden king. Yeah, yeah Jack is the end that was clear. 24-7. <laughs> 366. I have one other thing that we need to add to my written report. Talk to Magistrate Coel. We had decided to rename the, the road leading to the Sportsman's Club Clubhouse. We're going to rename that to Sportsman's Clubhouse Road. Right before you get to that road, there's another road that goes back, and you can. It goes, it goes up to five houses. It's a private road, but we just need to name it. I talked to the residents, and they said the Blue Hills Road. Blue what? Blue Hills. Blue Hills. Blue Hills Road. Blue used to own it. They said they'd always discuss naming it. That's for nine with one purpose, that's correct. Right. Good. Motion they'll to keep, approve. They'll keep their same address off of Sportsman Lake. Right. The road out of there. Second, to approve the Blue Hills Road. Mr. Elder? Yes. Mr. Masterson? Yes. Mr. Wigger? Yes. Mr. Cole? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Do you have anything else, Mr. Brown? Thank you. Thank you, Keith. Thank you.